the center of mass of a uniform semicircular ring of or wire. So, here drawn in yellow is our semicircular ring of a certain radius r and having a certain mass m and we are supposed to find out where we can concentrate all the mass of this half ring. So, what we do here is in order to do the mathematics of this question, we take the x axis along the horizontal let us say the one that passes through the two ends of the half ring as well as through the center of the ring also center of this half ring. So, this is the x axis let us say and the point and the axis perpendicular to that passing through the center of the half ring will be the y axis and with respect to this x and y coordinates of each part of the half ring we will try to find out its center of mass. We shall be using our basic formula itself the integral of x dm by m and the integral of y dm by m. The important part here is how do we divide this ring into elements? How do we find out the small elements which we divide this half ring into? So, what should what is the property of those elements that we expect? We expect that those elements are such that the integral of x dm is you no know, it is workable we can work upon this integral. So, we should be able to find out the x coordinate of um, each of the elements we should also be able to find out the y coordinate of each of the elements to find out the integral of y dm right. So, um, what we do here is in order to get the elements we consider a small portion of this ring. How do we consider this portion let us see to that. So, what we do here is we take up a certain point on the ring which makes an angle theta with the x axis. So, it is this point that we are discussing here. This is one point on the ring. How we have obtained it? We have obtained it by moving in the anti clockwise direction by an angle theta right. Now, what we do is we further move by a small angle d theta and we get another point on the same half ring. So, so that this angle here is d theta a very small angle d theta. Now, understand that if the radius of this half ring is r this will all this length will also be r. Do we understand that the thickness of this portion that we have obtained here will be nothing but r d theta right this small thickness and it is this portion now this portion in red that we are calling as our small element ok. Now, if you are considering this as our element can we find out its coordinates once again since d theta is a very small angle we can assume that this thickness is so small. So, that if we just find out the coordinates of the starting point of the element this particular point then that will be the coordinate of the whole element itself. This is important to understand that is the reason why we are considering the length of the element to be very very small by taking a small angle d theta a very small angle d theta that is the purpose. So, that we can consider this whole element to be like a point. So, do we understand that the coordinates of the starting point of the element ca we can obtain by drawing perpendiculars from here. Do we understand that this length will be the x coordinate and this length will be the y coordinate of this element which will be nothing but in terms of r and theta the x coordinate will be r cos theta this particular length will be r cos theta comma r sin theta will be the vertical length this length will be r sin theta. And now we say that we can assume the position of this element to be at this co these coordinates r cos theta and r sin theta using which now we can find out its center of mass. So, how do we find out the center of mass before we find out the center of mass we need to get the mass of this element as well. So, to get the mass what we do is we say that the mass of this element d m small mass of the element d m will be the mass per unit length of the half ring mass per unit length. Now, what is the length of the half ring if the radius of the half ring is r then its length will be pi r half of the circumference of a circle because this is a half ring multiplied by 
the length of the ring whose mass we are supposed to find out. What is the length? Rd theta. Right? So, this is how we get the small mass m of this elemental portion of the ring. See that this comes out to be m d theta by pi. Okay? Now, we can use this value of dm in the x coordinate and the y coordinate of center of mass finding them out. So, let us do that. x coordinate of center of mass by definition is by 1 by the total mass of the half ring into integral of x dm and now we substitute the values. 1 by capital M integral of x. What is x here by the way? What is the x coordinate of this elemental ring? It is r cos theta, right? So, r cos theta into the value of dm we have just now calculated m by pi d theta. And now we are supposed to integrate this expression. To integrate, we need to put the limits of integration as well. Look at the figure and identify the limits. See that this element that we have taken here subtends an angle theta with the x axis. Can we say that if we have to cover the whole ring by considering small small elements, then the first element that we shall consider here at the rightmost end of the half ring will be the one for which the value of theta will go to 0. And as we keep on increasing theta, we will be able to take all the elements along the half ring till we reach the last point of the half ring which will come here in the form of um, angle. What will be the angle here at for the last point? The angle will be pi. Do we see that? 180 degrees. So, do we understand that the limits of integration here will be nothing but 0 to pi. When we take the elements ranging from theta is equal to 0 to pi, we will be able to cover the whole half ring and we will be able to find out its center of mass using this expression then. So, now when we try to integrate, see that m cancels out once again and r and pi being constants will come out of the integral. Inside the integral, we are left with cos theta d theta limits from 0 to pi. See that r by pi integral of cos theta d theta is nothing but sin theta and when we put the limits from 0 to pi, see that we shall get r by pi into sin pi minus sin 0, both of which are 0, sin pi is also 0, sin 0 is also 0. So, we get the answer for x coordinate of center of mass here to be 0. That means, the, the x coordinate of the center of mass lies at x is equal to 0, that means on the y axis somewhere. Do you understand why this result is coming in? This result is coming because this half ring is placed symmetrically with respect to the x axis. See that the amount of half ring that we have on the left side of the y axis, we have the same amount of uh, half ring on the right side of the y axis, isn't it? So, by symmetry then we expect the x center of mass to lie somewhere on the y axis itself which means that its x coordinate should be 0. right? So, this is an anticipated result. What about the y coordinate of center of mass on the other hand? On the same lines if we try to find out y c m by the definition 1 by m integral of y d m from 0 to ok, we will put the limits later. Now, substitute the values 1 by capital M integral of what is the y coordinate of this element that we have considered? y coordinate is r sin theta. So, we will now put r sin theta into dm we have already calculated. Let us put that m by pi d theta. And do we see that once again the integrating factor is theta itself? So, what we shall do is we shall just substitute the values of the limits of theta which will be the same as the previous one 0 to pi the starting point will be 0 for theta is equal to 0 and the last point of the half ring will be for theta is equal to pi radians. Now, let us integrate. See that m cancels out once again, r by pi we can take out of the integral and when we integrate sin theta d theta from 0 to pi, integral of sin theta d theta will be minus cos theta. So, we will have minus cos theta limits from 0 to pi which we can actually invert. We can take away the minus sign by in inverting the limits. This is what we can always do in integration. 
so that this becomes cos theta limits from pi to 0. Now, see how this will help us. When we put r by pi and we uh, substitute the limits, we will have cos of 0 minus cos pi, right? What is that? r by pi into cos 0 is 1 minus cos pi is minus 1. So, we will get a 2 here. So, that 2 r by pi then becomes our answer. So, the y coordinate of center of mass here is coming out to be 2 r by pi which is an important result which tells us that the center of mass. Now, understand that this value 2 r by pi itself is slightly less than r because 2 by pi is a factor which is less than 1 pi is 3.14 right. So, 2 by pi will be less than 1 that means 2 r by pi will be less than r. So, that means that the y coordinate of center of mass lies somewhere here, somewhere over here on the y axis at a distance of 2 r by pi from the origin on the y axis, right. So, that is the position of center of mass. This is the center of mass of this half ring. This is an important result that we have obtained. In fact, we shall be using this result to find out another center of mass of a uniform semicircular disc which we shall be doing as the next exercise we shall do uh, see that. Uh, see that we have to uh, these are like standard results. So, as you work on the questions related to these you will have to remember these results because in some of the questions then we shall be using these results directly. So, as we practice through the questions automatically we will be able to um, remember these results because these are important and we will be using them at many places.